Welcome to Brennick's Bike Social, I'm Michael Burton and today we've got a pretty special one for you. So today we've been invited to Louth for the handover of all 30 fire blades in the John McGuinness 100th TT Start livery. So we thought what better time to sit down, have a bit of a catch up with him and do something that I've always wanted to do, have a pint of Guinness with John McGuinness. So come with me, let's see what he's got to say. So, John, uh, welcome to Bench Bike Social. I, again, I don't know why I keep saying that. You've been on this channel loads of times. Um, but, yeah, today um, it's something that I've always wanted to do, Pint of Guinness with John McGuinness, and <laughs> got the opportunity to do it today. Um, and really, you paid. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm being Even paid. Better. What more do you want? Oh, you paid for the Guinness. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's questionable. We'll not say who did pay for it. Um, first, I think first question, a uh, bit of time to, to think about it and uh, sort of stew on it, shall we say. But TT 2023, you're happy with? with your performance yeah yeah genuinely happy uh really enjoyed the whole uh event uh i enjoyed everything before that as well it's not just you don't just rock up at the tt pull some bikes out it's all the preparation the riding the testing the, the team the camaraderie the the whole build-up to it was was great we're testing in spain the first two bsb rounds um so it just it was it, it become like uh, you know, the, the momentum was there. Northwest was strong, straight to the TT, and I went faster on the first night than I did do the whole of the TT in 2022. So positive meeting. Uh, you know, I always felt like you know I'd, I was, you know, in bringing the bike home in safe hands, if you like, and uh, never really got out of my comfort zone. I just kept in that zone where I was happy, give myself, you know, a foot everywhere and a little bit of room for error, but. Uh, yeah, you know, it, ha, so part of me sort of thinks I probably could have gone a little bit better, but I, I don't think so. I was probably about where I am, so, you know, and it's funny, I've, all the years I've raced there, I did my fastest lap on the last lap of the senior, so uh, we was we was not standing still. We were going faster and faster through the meeting, and, I mean, you couldn't have got a better fortnight. The weather was incredible, the track was incredible, the lap speeds were incredible, lap records, race records race records uh, superb you know the whole the campsite where we were was toddy was there and you know hickey was part there and we all just had a good old good old laugh really to be fair and uh good camaraderie between everybody and, and yeah solid meeting for me you've uh, you kind of answered the question but do you think maybe you, you could have done any better do you, or do you feel that maybe because to me you seem fully prepared you were the uh, you were fairly fit, you, you looked fairly mm. strong, you looked really happy. Um, so do you think potentially there was anywhere that you could have improved on to just improve the performance a little bit? It's, yes, I, I, maybe, maybe. I, I, don't, I don't know. I got into a rhythm of, uh, in a comfy zone really. And uh, maybe if, maybe, but only a, a, maybe a mile an hour. I, I think where we were was where we were going to be. Uh, you know, there's with with a bit more pushing, could have been maybe fourth or fifth in the first race. You know, Jamie Coward beat me and Kill Hillier and stuff. So nothing against Jamie Coward and James. They did a fantastic job. You know, uh, they're riding fantastic and uh, it's good to see. But maybe I should have, you know, maybe a bit give them a bit more of a run for the money. But I'm not I'm not looking back with any regrets at all. You know, I think that. Uh, you know, people ask, oh, "Are you okay with finishing that position seventh nowadays?" You're so used to winning. I'm, I am. I'm really, really happy. And I, <clears throat> I sort of always said, uh, always said that if I've done my best, then that's all I can give. Uh, but when you do, when them lads are doing 136 mile an hour laps on uh, on super stock bikes, then mm -hmm. you know what? What do you do? You know, yeah. they're the, the new generation. Uh, they've upped the game, and when I up my game in. You know, after we lost David Jeffries, I was first man to do 28 to 29s and, and, and one in you know, 130 and stuff. So, uh, and it, it, it just felt easy for me. And I know that position they're in, they're just, it's just coming naturally to them. But, uh, you know, I've done 132.7 before. Well, that would have probably maybe put me fourth or fifth, but I didn't quite match that. But I'm, I'm happy. 
I'm happy. I'm waffling on a bit, but I'm, no, no, you I, gen- I am genuinely. I am, you, I, you know, somebody said to me, oh, you know, but the race winner's time is X, and then if you're in a percentage of the winner's time, you get a silver replica. So if you're getting a silver replica, then you're not hanging about. Mm-hmm. You know, you're definitely holding your own, and uh, you know, s- sat on the factory Honda. All I wanted to do was hold my own, bring the bikes home safe, and that's that's what I did. So I can't really ask any more from that. I'm 51 year old for Christ's sake. Well, you know, you've, you've kind of led me quite nicely <laughs> on to the next question. To be fair, I mean, a lot of people have said at the start of this year, you know, give it up, give it up, time to retire, give give somebody younger the seat. But in reality, you've beaten mm. most of the younger riders out there at 51. Yeah, that still must give you a little bit of push to say, I love it. you know I, what, I ain't stopping. I, I've, ne- I've never stopped riding. I've never stopped riding my enduro bike. I've never stopped doing a bit of motocrossing and doing a bit of testing. I'm like in the hamster wheel. I'm just keep going and going. It's repetitive, but I know, you know, day-to-day stuff, like, it's hard for me. Do it. Even walking a couple of miles, I'm, I'm hanging out on my backside, but like, <laughs> I get on the bike, it's like my little office and my little zone. I go into my little place. And uh, like I say, you know, if there's a queue of youngsters, if there was a queue of youngsters ready to, to do it, they'd be on the bike. You know, racing's a... Uh, you know, I understand it. I get it. You know, uh, it's you know they've, they've they've got to prove themselves, and there's a few riders coming through that have to do it, and and they will do it, and then I can move over. But I'd like to think that if I wanted to do it again, that there would be a bike there for me, uh, even if I'm just in the corner of the garage and doing my own little thing. You know, uh, but you know the, the bike's good enough to win. To, you know, it won the first race with with Michael. You know, it's a strong bike. It's that new Fireblade. So. Uh, but for me, I'm just happy in my little my little world, doing my little thing, and if I can carry on, we will. Let, we'll turn away from TT because <laughs> that's been and gone. Let's focus on today. It's been quite a nice day, actually, to see happy customers walking away with a replica of your 100 start Fireblade. <clears throat> How emotional has it made you? Because you've been, not pulled from pillar to post, but you've been speaking to everybody <laughs> and talking to everyone, and at times today you have seemed mm. a little bit emotional. It's quite a, a, a big day, really, for it, you, it's, isn't it? It is a big day, you know, because... It, in, your mind's flat out with racing, you know, all sorts of other things going on. And then it, when I look at that gold bike, it's all there in a document. You know, every single race I've done leading up to the 100 start. And I can look at things and go, I remember that race. And I go, oh, well, you know, Cam Sensor went in that race. Or that one got away from me. Or I won that one. And well, I've actually got that bike in my bike collection. So the memories just keep flooded, flooding back. And you don't realise what you've actually done over the years until you do look at it like 400 singles TT, you know, Ducati, Triumphs, Yamahas, electric bikes, it's all there, all in a document. So it's nice, nice to put my little twist on it all. You know, I spent a lot of time with Stephen Davidson trying to get all those pictures together. It took a lot of time faffing about and I wanted it absolutely dead right. So, it's, you know, put my name to something, I want it dead right. But it was nice that when they walked in, people were happy. People got to see how it works you know the 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 how the team works uh what goes into it all this stuff so and a lot of people said to me today thank thank you for the memories you know that that's the most important bit for me you know it's uh not a few people have bought one and maybe they're not ride it maybe they might sell it i don't know but there's a few people proper genuine people and they come from all over the country uh to speak to me and you know my times I, i'll give them all the time in the world it's not a problem you know they've they bought the bike, and uh, I want to tell them my journey, you know. And uh, yeah, cool. You know that they're happy customers and happy rider. It must be. Did you think back in '94, '95, whenever I don't know, you probably started before I was even born. But <laughs> did you think that you'd ever get to this point? Of, <laughs> did you think you'd ever get to this point of 30 people buying your hundred? <laughs> did I bollocks? No. <laughs> did I bollocks? No, I didn't have a clue. I mean, I was just a bricky, fumbling through my life and. Big dream of being a TT winner and racer and all that. You know, I got my chance in 96 to do the TT, but honestly, I took it with both hands. You know, I was racing before that, 91, 92, 3, 4. But I was just, you know, nothing. And it was ducking and dive, just me, my dad, lad and dad racing. I always had the dream of doing the TT, but then uh, I got my opportunity and took it. You know, first podium in 97. But it's just, it's like yesterday. It's weird. You know, like... Uh, oh, What's after your Guinness? Yeah, don't drink no, your Guinness. You know, I, I never thought I, I, if somebody would have, if it, if somebody said to you in nine, 1996, right, you're gonna win three, you just take it on you. Somebody give you like a pack of cards mm-hmm. and I, you go, I'll have three, I'll have, you know, but to win, to win 23 is amazing. Michael Dunlop's drilled me now; he's 25. Uh, 
But no, I didn't. I didn't expect to be still riding at 51, still going all right at 51, and handing replica fire blades over to to people. Didn't have a clue. Just how much does the the support of the fans mean to you? Because today it it's shown to me how much you mean to people. I, I I sort of take this for granted, my job, and I've done it for so long now, I'm kind of numb to it. So to see that today mm. was really quite humbling for me. Is it humbling for you as well? Still is. Still it's this day, you know, going back to the earlier years and that 2007 when I did that first 130, the reaction around the, for the crowd all the way around in, you know, seven we did that 130. And, and going back uh, with a 100 start by the goal, the goal fireblade, it was uh, the reaction I got was mint proper nervous about it all I was number one TV helicopters there <laughs> like oh my god my ass is absolutely <laughs> nipping here <laughs> but you know that the, the reaction from the crowd was amazing and this year as well you know when I'd finished six in the first race uh, <clears throat> on the last lap I got cheered all the way around and you know you can I can see it out of the corner of my eyes and uh, I love that don't get me wrong you know it, it, it's a great feeling to be sat on a bike going around the Isle of Man at them speeds in a decent place with the people enjoying what you're doing. I touched on it earlier about, you know, people say, oh, I watched you here or I saw you do that. I saw you win your first win. I saw you in your first TT 96. And uh, everybody's got different personalities and characters. And I love all that, you know, like today, mm -hmm. just everybody was from lads from Ireland, was lads from Scotland. They were just, you know, the, the, the wife's there and, there's a couple of guys there with the wives there and they've like accepted that they need this 30th yeah. anniversary blade so they're proper keepers aren't they them, yeah. them ladies uh, yeah. they allow him to uh, I mean, the, the spend one, the money on the bikes the one guy that I was talking to he'd, he'd saved his whole life savings he spent his <laughs> whole life savings and also taken a loan from his dad <laughs> for, for a 30th wow. anniversary blade in your wow. colour so it's, if it's brought a smile to his face yeah. his money's there they build money to spend don't they mm -hmm. you know it goes around comes around and just get if you want one, get one. I, I, you know, I've got a few bikes in my collection. I love bikes. I'm, I love the, the soul about them, and you know, it's, it's weird. There's a lot of things in my life I'm not interested in, and if I'm not interested, I'm zero interest. But if I'm engaged in it, I'm in. But yeah. I, I go in my bike collect, look at my bike collection. And I'm like, whoa, wow, look at that, look at that. I never get bored looking. I've never got bored. I mean, I've seen a million fire blades. I still sat there looking at them. I've looked at them a million times, but still like, hmm, it's cool, you know. Mm -hmm. So, I just that reaction from the people's faces that that means the world to me mm. you took you just spoke about your collection there do you reckon you're gonna have your own hundred start fire blade in that collection well i told i just have told you, them you're trying yeah. to twist neil and half arm as much as you can i've, I've told uh, one of the other journalists that i'm getting the original one so uh, i'll probably have to tell you i'm well, getting the original one so well, you it's, set, uh, planted the seed now yeah i hope i do it's it's, 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 a, it's a handshake and a, and a <laughs> there was i they asked me to to lose a bit of weight but if you ever want to motivate John McGinnis to lose a bit of weight then <laughs> offer him a motorbike you know it's not a money thing I'm not yeah. interested in you know a, 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 some cash or whatever it, it, it was about the bike this is about because I love it I love mm -hmm. the, the I'd love to add it to my collection um, you know verbally we've done a deal <laughs> so I haven't come in my van this week so I can't <laughs> get it in my van <laughs> But I think the bike still goes to a lot of shows and it still goes around everywhere. It's an old deal. It's been all over the world, to all the shows. Uh, but it, 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 yeah, it will be the icing on the cake to get to get the, the proper bike. The road bikes are lovely, but I want the bike I sat on yeah. and did the under start on the genuine thing, which would be mega cool. I'm trying to buy my super stock bike as well. I'm trying to have a deal we have for my super stock bike, but I don't need it as well. Why do I need it? I'm just like, my missus goes, what do you need this for? And, I just I can't help it. It's a disease. Yeah, but I, I'm one of the lucky ones to have seen your garage, and mm. it, it's it is mega impressive. But that I think the hundred start blade will needs to go in. Doesn't it, it just finish it, yeah. finish the job off. Yeah, yeah you know I don't know how long I'm going to be racing for. So the, the last few bikes that I've ridden would be nice, nice to own personally in my collection, and uh, you know they'll, when I'm going the ground, I have to dig a big hole and just chuck it in with me. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, as a kid, I just flog it and be, <laughs> be off on holiday. Well, we've got uh, a couple of questions from the public now. Um, I was, I've got that from the Shag Married Annoyed podcast. They call it questions from the public. What so, podcast? Shag Married Shag Annoyed. Married Annoyed. Shag Married Annoyed. Yeah. So, have you ever seen Chris and Rosie Ramsey before? Probably. No, obviously probably not. not. You, no, no. You don't I like listen, it though. You don't listen to podcasts, do you? 
No, not Sometimes. Really. Yeah. yeah. So the the first question: uh, Will there be another book? Really enjoyed the first. Mm. Loads of la- uh, laugh out loud moments with mixed in with serious stuff. Do you reckon you've got yes. another book in you? Hundred percent. I could piss another book, no problem. <laughs> Uh, we only touched the surface, really, with them. Uh, I spoke to John Hogan about it, who goes through my first, like, my autobiography. And weirdly, last week we were talking about it. Uh, over winter, or shortly, we're going to start uh, scraping the bones together of a start of something. But uh, we could, easy. Yeah, I want to. Definitely want to. I enjoyed them. I enjoyed doing my last book. It made me cry. It made me laugh. You know, it brought a lot of emotions in into play and a lot of memories and... Uh, there's more, you know. There's world endurance. There's different parts of the chapters. There's Norton. There's back with Honda. There's, you know, there's 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 so much more world endurance. I did in O2. I didn't touch much on that, but uh, yeah, definitely another book coming. Yeah, I want one. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, the next one then, uh, mince chicken or steak and ale. I'm guessing this is pies. He didn't specify mince chicken or steak and ale. So it's got to be a pie. Ale, yeah. So Ste- steak, steak and, and ale for sure. Yeah, mince, lamb and lamb and. Well, no, I don't like that. Mint sauce, did you say? Mint or mince? Mince. 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 Chicken and mince. Well, it just says chick. It says mince, comma chicken or steak and ale. Steak and ale. I've never had a mince. Yeah. Oh, mince pie, I suppose at Christmas. Well, I mince pie, no, that. unless it's cooked absolutely drowned in custard. Yeah. I'm not right into a mince pie. Oh. Uh, give me heartburn all the time. <laughs> but any pie, to be fair, like I like the old lamb. That, I like lamb, but I'm not allowed to eat lamb in our house because my missus hates it. <laughs> she can't stand the smell, so we'd, I never, ever got lamb. I had lamb chops in here last night. They were absolutely to die for. <laughs> they were joyous. Uh, yeah, but, yeah, steak and ale. Steak and sure. ale. Yeah, I think that's, yeah. that's got to be everyone's own, surely. Uh, the next one, then. Uh, does he ride on the road, non-race in brackets much? Uh, if so, what does he think of it nowadays? Now, you, have, you did tell me a mega story from years ago down Garstang High Street. I think you've then also <laughs> got to tell it after after oh, answering the question. What? So, do you yeah, still ride on the road or? I did high side my SP one up the middle of Garstang High Street, <laughs> and it slid under a Mark Five uh, Escort, smashed a bumper in. <laughs> I had no insurance or anything, but I don't think bike was registered. <laughs> I had to drag it from under this Mark Five Escort. Okay, you know, this, this old ear gets out. She was, "Are you all right, Sean?" I was like, "Yeah, yeah." <laughs> hey, oh, don't worry about the bumper; it was damaged anyway. As long as you're okay, I was like, "Got away with that gone. one." <laughs> Got away with that one. But I've got an Africa twin. Um, I was going to come on my Africa twin yesterday to the event here. But I looked at it, insurance has run out. <laughs> and I'm sponsored by this insurance company, this Bennett hey, really? people, but I'm, I'm struggling a little bit to, 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 to get, get through. some insurance. Yeah, I'm sure we <laughs> so, can sort something. <laughs> <laughs> but I've got I, I know, I've got a blade that's registered that I instruct on with you guys. Uh, and to be honest, I've not ridden it on the road. Uh so last time I rode on the road was... Well, it was my blade. Last year I did something with Motorcycle News with some customers and, and some dealers. Uh, but what do I think about on the road? It scares me a little bit. You know, a lot of cyclists around. Not there's all wrong with them. Uh, people don't have any respect for each other on the road anymore. Uh, and, you know, we. I live now on on my track that I cut my teeth on, really. This is the road to Kirby Lonsdale, to Devil's Bridge. On one of the roads, they've put their mad for speed cameras on it. So now they're all on this other road, and it's it's not good. You know, the it's you get up in the morning at five and six o'clock, you can hear it, it's like flipping TT practice. You can hear them all howling through the villages, and it's like next thing you know, air ambulances up and stuff. So I don't know. I, I, occasionally I ride on the road, but not a lot really. No, not that I don't want to. I just yeah. I get my kicks on the on the track and. Uh, I get to you know get get wound on a bit on the track, can't I? But you can't wind them on the road. Yeah. Uh, the next one then is my truck driver now. Yeah, you are actually. Yeah. Uh, next one is then. Um, have you done any bricklaying recently? <laughs> when was the last time you did any bricklaying? Now you see, I, I, think the I, last I answered time this question for the person. I said probably 1995, but you could. 1998. All oh, right. Sorry. Last time I laid a brick was 1998. Uh, when I built my garage at home, I had a little bit of a go at it, but I was. Full of tramadol and morphine and didn't even know what date it was half the time. So I had my cage on my leg after my bump on my leg. So I was just like, put the trial back down again. But weirdly, a good question because uh, I have a sponsor from this part of the world in Louth uh, called GBM Demolition. And uh, one of my first jobs when I passed my test in my attic, I borrowed a trailer, came across to Louth and bought 8,000 bricks off him. 
So I've got 8,000 bricks in stock at home. No idea why. But at some point, I want to build something at my house. Just put my little my little touch on it. Because mm-hmm. my missus is going, what are, you, what are you on about? You never, you, know, you won't do it. I just want to build a little shed or a wall or a retaining wall or something like that. Just to, just to say I've built it at my house. Because people just... They think I'm taking piss when I tell them I used to be a bricklayer. They never, never believed I did any work, you know. But <laughs> I started racing at 18. I was an apprentice bricklayer. And I served my time, still racing. And I did lay bricks up until 1998. I had a couple of little details because I, I, I did a bit of muscle fishing. They called me a cockle picker sometimes, but I was muscle fishing. So I did other bits, a bit of hand driving stuff. But I was a bricky until 1998. Hated it. Just wanted to be a professional bike racer. So bricklaying made me have more drive to race bikes properly. But it was a good, honest living. And did some nice jobs. Uh, and there you go. Uh, one final one from the public then. Uh, favorite year, favorite year blade for the road. I've got a feeling I know the answer to this one, but I'll let you answer it. Uh, two thousand and seven five blade the, for sure. Two thousand. Wait, six take. and seven was the same buy. Just felt sort of physically bigger. Uh, you sat in it, not on it. Um, <clears throat> the bodywork was a bit bigger. The just a nice thing. It had a hydraulic clutch, cassette gearbox. It was just a bonny, but an exhaust under the under the seat. Just a pretty bike, and it, it's you probably choose that bike because I had the most success on it. But six and seven, I did the double double at the TT. First mounted 131 at the Ulster as well, and 130 at the Ulster, 131 at the Ulster. So it was uh, just an ace bike. I just knew, I knew every piece of the. When I wrote, it's a road bike, and I'm talking about a race bike, so I'm just well, going up on a tangent. Thing, but same thing. It just felt like when I was riding it, it was felt like I was riding my missus. It just felt like I knew everything <laughs> she, it was going to do underneath me. So uh, it's, uh, I loved it, and it was so reliable as well. That reliable. Every time I would walk to it, not being cocky, I just thought I can win this race, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah, I mean, all the blades are on the badge on it they're pretty good aren't they you're only saying that just so you get your 100 start well, blade no, in the just, garage you know, hey, we're no, a little, little blip in 17 yeah. but mostly I mean the 8 blade the 9 blade the 10 blade the 11 blade the mm-hmm. 12 blade it was more or less the same but mm-hmm. when I went to TT 8 we won 9 we won 10 we brought down 11 we won 12 we won 13 we won 14 I was a bit injured 15 we won 16 I was on the podium so it, mm-hmm. it was just it was just and even if it wasn't so you good. there was, was like Hutchie and Guy Martin yeah, on him as well and Guy was on him Cameron Donald was doing okay mm-hmm. on them. Uh, you know, uh, Gary Johnson was going fast. They were just a solid package. And, uh, you know, it lost its way a little bit, but now it's back. You know, everybody wants a five of them in the dominating British super stock and uh, a lot of the other races, yeah. Uh, so one final one from me then. Another final one. Another final one, one. one final, final one from final me one. this time, though, not from the public. <laughs> one more year? Uh, a million dollar question. At the minute, as I'm my arse is pointing to the ground on this chair, yes, Perfect. 100%. Uh, just got to dot the I's, cross the T's and watch this space. Fantastic. Well, John, thank you very much. No Lifetime problem. ambition achievement of having a Guinness with John McGuinness. So thank you very much. He's sucked his faster than mine as well. I know, there'll be comments in YouTube saying, that. saying that. Gone it's gone to, head gone head to mine as well because there's no black currant in it as well. But anyway, no, thank you very much. That's girly. <laughs> thank you. Cheers, man.